Hi, I am Dr. Sakim Mansoor speaking from my channel Learning Anatomy. As uh, you know, I have completed a very detailed discussion of the spinal cord anatomy, all the neuroscience uh, anatomical uh, facts about that in the series of about 13, 14 lectures uh, on my channel. And uh, that was a very good feedback from all the anatomists it was appreciated. So I request you uh, to uh, keep the interest on and uh, to the coming topics by and encourage me by subscribing and uh, uh, sharing my videos, liking it and commenting. I need it for my support to keep the spirit alive. This is the one year on and the Corona third wave is already there to let me continue the e-education and e-learning program. Uh, they are up there more and more. So let's focus on today's topic, which is the upper motor versus lower motor neuron liens, a very, very important topic indeed, you know. So uh, let's first uh, again revise the definitions. What is an upper motor neuron lien and is it a lower motor neuron lien? What is the upper motor neuron definition? Uh, so what is the upper motor neuron? These are the cortical neurons that give origin to the corticospinal and corticobulbar tracts. You know, these are the upper motor neurons, right? Coming from the cortex, or even the brain stem, right? These are the cortico, uh, these are also known as the pyramidal tracts or the corticospinal tracts. So these are the upper motor neurons, so the cortical neurons, corticospinal and the corticobulbar tracts. So these are the upper motor neurons, which arise from the cortex, will pass through the posterior limb of the internal capsule and also rise from the brain stem. These are the pyramidal uh, tracts or the corticospinal and the corticobulbar tracts. These are the upper motor neurons. Then the lower motor neurons, neurons that directly innervate skeletal muscles. They are found in the anterior horn of the spinal cord. This pathway is known as the lower motor neuron pathway or the final common pathway. Here you can see, see these are the upper motor neurons, right? Coming from right again, I revise, they're from the cortex and they're passing from the brain stem. And uh, there is, this is shown as a pyramidal decussation, right? And um, great motor decussation. And the, these fiber cross to the opposite side and they are the, most of them, the cortico, um, uh, spinal tracts, about 90% of them uh, decussate to the opposite side and known as a lateral corticospinal tract and they reach the spinal cord and uh, and they relay up to the uh, lower motor neuron lying in the anterior horn of the spinal cord and uh, they via the anterior root of the spinal nerve they go through and supply the skeletal muscle. This is the final common pathway and the, the lien here at this level, for example, or the lien here, at, for example, or the lien here, for example, these are the upper motor neuron liens. Injury here, here will uh, tell you the causes of the lower motor neurons, especially. And uh, this is the lower motor neuron, right? At the, this level, it can be an injury over here at this level, like in the anterior horn of the a spinal cord, these are the lower motor neuron lesions. Uh, all to, their uh, lesion effects would be separate and it would be separate. They are discussed in detail, right? So this is the definition again for Rivian. And this is, a, um, uh, this, is a, this is a sort of a simple picture to describe it um, uh, for a common scheme. This is a schematic representation, right? So in the common, you know, upper motor neuron uh, lesions a result in increased activity of the muscle stretch reflexes. Muscle stretch reflexes are like uh, your uh, ankle jerk, the knee jerk, the biceps jerk, right? And uh, also there is the result in uh, the increased activity like the hyper reflexia or the spasticity. And the lower motor neuron uh, ligands result in decreased activity of the muscle stretch reflexes. That would be ear flexia or the flaccid uh, muscles, right? I will, I will uh, explain these terms separately very soon in the coming sections. So first of all, we'll study the upper motor neuron lesions. Upper motor neuron lesions. They are divided into uh, two, two stages, the acute stage and the chronic stage lesions. Acute stage upper motor neuron lesions and the chronic stage upper neuron lesions. Their features are little bit different. 
other quite different in acute stage uh, lesions uh, these produce transient spinal shock including flaccid paralysis right flaccid means uh, there is a, uh, the muscles are soft their activity is decreased so, so they are soft fla uh, flabby muscles and the flaccid the muscles are par paralyzed right so hypotonia and how we define the tone of a muscle the tone of a muscle is a state of continuous partial contraction of a muscle and is dependent on the integrity of a monosynaptic reflex arc this is a definition which i already gave you in my very popular lecture the introduction to the nervous system introduction to the neuroanatomy so the acute stage lesions produce flaccid paralysis and hypotonia this tone of the muscle would be decreased right so this is that partial contraction that tone would be decreased so their stretch of the muscle would be less a reflex here there would be absence of the knee joint reflex or the ankle joint reflex or the biceps reflex the tri triceps reflex they would be uh, absent do row reflex that is known as the a reflexia here this level this is this muscle wall will be deprived of its uh, um, uh, innervation of you will see the upper motor neurons they relay on to these lower motor neurons the chronic stage lesions right so they are uh, different here is the flaccid uh, paralysis uh, there is the spastic paralysis there was in the uh, acute stage lesion that was the flaccid paralysis muscles were soft and as they become chronic right the this uh, upper motor neuron lesions the paralysis is the spastic spasticity what is the spasticity the muscles are hard they are very hard and uh, though they are paralyzed they cannot function and uh, their action is not there but the muscle are hard and the hypertonia the tone is increased hypertonia what it is it occurs producing increased tone in anti gravity muscles that is extensors of the legs and flexors of arms they are the anti gravity muscles extensors of legs and flexors of arms their tone would be increased hypertonia and the chronic stage lesions what they produce reduction or even the loss of superficial abdominal and cremasteric reflexes what is a superficial abdominal reflex like if you there uh, you know from the anatomy of the abdomen the abdomen is uh, superficially divided into uh, you know um quadrants and if a quadrant of the um, uh, abdomen is uh, stroked the umbilicus is uh, uh, diverted towards move towards that uh, uh, stroke the point of similar that is the reflex and what is the cremasteric reflex you know there is a cremasteric muscle in the males and if the medial side of the thigh is uh, stro uh, stroked on either side that the testes of the that side move upwards this is a cremasteric reflex and the clonus what is the clonus this is another abnormal muscle activity sometimes seen as a common manifestation of a hyperreflexia it is seen in the chronic stage uh, lesion of the upper motor neuron and the clonus uh, occurs when muscle stretch reflexes take place in series a relaxation of one muscle triggers the contraction in an other muscle resulting in the rapid alternating contraction and relaxation of antagonistic muscles for example clonus can be tested at the ankle this is being tested this is the ankle clonus you see what is that this is uh, the ankle is, is held forcefully and maintained um, there forcefully in dorsiflexion and uh, if the clonus is present what will happen Uh, continued uh, continued uh, rapid flexion and extension of the foot if there is clonus present what would be happening continued rapid flexion and extension of the foot there here it would be continuously doing like moving like this extension and flexion so the loss of performance of the fine skilled voluntary movements also occurs in the chronic stage lesions this occurs especially at the distal end of the limbs 
So another sign, Babinski sign, would be positive. So let's discuss what is the normal Babinski sign, and what is the uh, negative positive Babinski sign. Of course, this is in the upper motor neuron region of the chronic stage. This is the normal plantar uh, response. This is what happens if the lateral side of the uh, sole of the foot is stroked. What happens normally? All the five toes are flexed. Right, the dorsiflexion of all these five toes. This is a normal plantar response. But if there is uh, the uh, the upper motor neuron lien, what happens? Babinski sign occurs, which is the extensor plantar response. What happens if this? The, again, we stroke that side lateral side of the sole sole of the foot, and what happens? This uh, great toe goes up. And all of the rest of the lateral uh, four toes, they fan out, right? They fan out, right? So this is uh, this is uh, this is interestingly uh, this point to be mentioned that in uh, infants, this Babinski sign is also positive normally. So clasp knife reaction. Also, this is upper motor neuron lien. Clasp knife reaction. What is that? When passive movement of a joint is attempted, there is a resistance owing to spasticity of the muscles. The muscles on stretching suddenly give way due to neurotendinous organ-mediated inhibition. This is clasp knife reaction. So this was about the upper motor neuron lesions. This is a very brief discussion now about the lower motor neuron lesions. The factors causing the lower motor neuron lesions, which destroy the anterior horn cells and produce symptoms of the lower motor neuron lesions. What are these? These are the infection for the viral infection of the poliomyelitis and the trauma conditions where blood supply if the uh, the cell is compromised. Tumors and the degenerative tissues. Any tumor, then the carcinoma can be responsible for that, or the degenerative diseases. So, what are the symptoms if the lower motor neuron lesions uh, produce flaccid paralysis? Of course, when uh, you see over here, this uh, uh, this uh, neurons would be damaged, supplying to the skeletal muscle over here, responsible for the contraction. When the maintenance of the to uh, tone, they would be damaged. The muscle won't be able to contract to bring about its action, normal action. So there would be flaccid paralysis. There would be no tone in the muscle. It would be very soft and the, unable to produce its normal action. Decreased reflexes or areflexia. Of course, when there is no muscle uh, supply to the skeletal muscle, it is, uh, it is the final common pathway is destroyed. So the deprivation of that nerve supply would in, uh, lead to no, no, uh, uh, areflexia. Uh, absence of the reflexes, like uh, again, like ankle reflex or the biceps reflex, uh, for example. These are the muscle stretch reflexes. Uh, if I get time uh, these days, I will try to upload a lecture on the uh, these muscle stretch reflexes as well as separately uh, highlighting these. Uh, what is the normal reflex arc? So uh, other uh, symptoms of the lower motor neuron lesions are the fasciculations and the fibrillations. What are they? Fasciculations are the visible muscle twitches. Muscle twitches in a resting condition that can be visible. That is a fasciculation. And if that uh, uh, contraction or the twitching is uh, not visible, if the person can feel it but not visible to the observing uh, physician or to himself, they they are called as the fibrillations. So fasciculation are the visible muscle twitches and the fibrillation are the non-visible muscle contractions. So muscle atrophy. What is atrophy? You can go back to my lecture on the introduction to the nervous system. I will explain. Of course, I can tell you again, atrophy is the wasting of the muscle. Muscle mass would be decreased in this lower motor neuron lesions. So muscular contracture. Muscular contracture. What is a contracture? This is a shortening of a paralyzed muscles. Muscle which is paralyzed, no activity there, it would be shortened. It occurs more often in the antagonist muscles whose action is no longer opposed by the paralyzed 
agonist muscles so this is they are the you remember what is a contracture if you go to the upper limb anatomy like there is a dupuytren's contracture contracture is a shortening right so this is the um, you know uh, upper motor neuron and again this picture is no uh, end uh, end point to explaining it again and again uh, given you enough of the anatomy of the spinal cord to understand this simple schematic diagram so in the last uh, i discuss with you this uh, in the tabulated form what is the differences between the upper motor neuron lien and the lower motor mm -hmm. neuron lien this is a very common question at the undergraduate level and as well as the post graduate level and uh, whatsoever, whatsoever exam you are taking and for your concept of the neuroanatomy so in the upper motor neuron lien there is the spastic paresis and in the lower motor neuron lien there is the flaccid paresis and uh, here in the upper motor neuron there is the hyperflexia and lower motor neuron decreased reflexes or airflexia so in upper motor neuron lens muscle tone is increased and in lower motor neuron the, the fasciculations or fibrillations and the bibinski sign is present in the upper motor neuron lens very hard is a characteristic feature is very important and no bibinski sign in the lower motor neuron lens clasp knife reflex i told you already what is that in the upper motor neuron lens and decreased muscle tone or atonia so this use atrophy of muscle in upper motor neuron lens this is atrophies of disused type the muscle as there is a paralysis this as this would be the spastic paralysis so the atrophy would be disused muscle would be uh, for a longer period of time not used that is the disused atrophy the mass would be muscle mass would be decreased and this is straight away atrophy of the muscles very soon it, it won't be having any innervation so it will be leading to the leading to the atrophy of the muscles and here in the upper motor neuron lien speed of voluntary movements decreased of course the corticospinal tracts are involved and in lower motor neuron loss of voluntary movements right there is as there is no nerve supply to the skeletal muscles so there is a loss of voluntary movements and in the last uh, upper motor neuron uh, upper motor neuron lens there is inflection of a large part of the body and as the lower motor neuron small area of the body is affected obviously you can go and see this inter figure interpretation small areas involved in this lien and a large area in this here obviously you go back to my previous slides the spinal cord so this is and and in the and you see this upper motor neuron lens their symptoms are contralateral or ipsilateral but always below the level of the lien contralateral or upper motor neuron lien symptoms are contralateral or ipsilateral but always below the level of lien but these lower motor neuron lens are always uh, ipsilateral and manifest at the level of the lien so this is the basic so with this i end the topic of the upper motor neuron lien and the lower motor neuron lens very important one thank you very much for watching my channel i do request again please subscribe my channel to encourage me and keep the things going on and i'm alone making this channel efforts all these things and uh, uh, for the next topic uh, i will be uh, choosing which topic to discuss with share with you thank you very much stay tuned goodbye stay healthy in the wake of the covid wave 3 all the best